Bring the value quickly. <laughs> 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 I love it. I trick Joe all the time. We are live on Oz Profit Investors, uh, the, the place you want to be on a Wednesday night. So uh, we bring the big names, have the big, big fun, and I want to trick Joe every week. So how how are you going, Joe? How is everybody? Throw your comments, thoughts. How are you going, mate? What's what's the state in life? My my day's been fantastic. Another day of beautiful lockdown. Another day of just hair growing, hair growing, mo growing. Um, so. There's no haircut in sight, so it's just going to just keep going and going and going. So it's 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 kind of fun. I don't know, mate. How how was your day, Ben, mate? How are you being? Um, my, my day. I mean, you kind of know how my day was, but no, it was was pretty good actually. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got a bit ranty in pieces in our chat, but no, I'm I'm going uh, going fantastic and just really enjoying kind of where this is growing and and what we're doing <laughs> and, and looking forward to spending more time on it as well as as we can. To, to throw some value out to the audience. So we got we got the got the guys roll guys and girls rolling for us property. Throw your comments, throw your questions. If you think Joe needs a shave uh, of his mo, throw mo in the comments. Or if you think we should keep it, throw uh, 80s 80s porn no, star. Throw in there grow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> throw <laughs> but uh, no, so look, let's get straight into it, man. Let's get cracking. Um, life hack. What's what's or do you want? Uh, how about I'll go first. My life hack, and and you can channel my inspiration. How does that sound? Okay, Joe is good. So my life hack for this week, and I, I was really thinking about it. So I'm scraping the barrel a little bit, but I, I came up with some inspiration. So you know how everybody's uh, these days, you don't really have photo albums. So instead of having the photo album, I've, I've got an app on my phone called Time Hop. So everybody's taking taking photos. So you can remember any anything that you've got on you. You can hook up your kind of Google Drive. I think you can hook, hook up most things. So you'll see a whole bunch of kind of memories, flash up photos. And, and I think the reason I'm craving that because I see every cup, every pretty much every year for luck, without fail, for probably the last six or seven or eight years, maybe actually no, 10 years, I've traveled. So I get to see travel photos almost every day. And it just makes me think, shit, this is what I'm going to be able to do eventually one of these days. So that's why it's probably, <laughs> that's my life at me. A little bit of reminiscence. I kind of like it when Facebook does that to us. When you've got that little that little reminder, it pings you like, "Oh, this is what you were doing ten years ago." And I was like, "Wow, I'm so much. I'm. I was so much cooler then. I was traveling the world, having <laughs> having fun." Um, but no, we're still having a blast here. So, um, you guys are in for a bit of a treat today. I'm going to tell you that. Bloody Jeff was up. I got a message at 1:05 a.m. Um, which is this presentation and slideshow. So he's put a lot of effort and energy into this little prezzo that we've got here tonight. Um, so we did have another guest scheduled in, but there was a conflict of um, calendars and we are now ruled by our calendars. Um, oh, my life hack, these bad boys, little oh, AirPods, yeah. little AirPods. So this is what my life used to be, a tangled mess. And every single time I try and get it out, but that wasn't the real problem. The real problem was that these things break, these little things when you have them in your pocket. Now, all here. You pop it in, I'm sold. It's no hands. No hands, baby, no hands. <laughs> so that know. is my basic life hack. 200 and whatever. But actually, my other life hack is just be careful. Don't. I bought two other ones that were like no-name brands thinking, oh, I can get an affordable pair and it'll be good. They're not good. Just get the Apple ones if you have an Apple and get whatever, if you have an Android. That is my little life hack. It's not the best I've life hack. I've got a life hack for you, Joe. I've got a life hack on the pods, mate. Uh, for the Google, for the Android, for the for the awesome Android users out there, oh, yeah. Blue Eggs. I got picked mine up for 90 bucks, and they're, they're fantastic quality. I listen to a truckload of, and, and I think they're normally about 129 bucks. So I think they get about, oh, look at Joe. He's frozen. He's got the logo up. He's, yeah, I think he's, have you frozen, Joe? No, yeah, no. Uh, Gee, I'm yes and no. Oh. Face has. I should have yeah. smiled. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. All right, yeah. So on to let's 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 keep it short and sharp, and let's. But you know, if there's heaps of questions, I don't care. We'll go. We'll go to midnight. We'll just we'll just keep going. Let's let's not promise that. But Joe, first sponsor, the uh, the one, the only Steve Polizzi. Let's get it get a cracking. Let's hope it works. <laughs> I feel like I feel like as the image here is Hello House, it is going to have to be Hello House. Oh, shit, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as my camera. Is struggling to work at the moment. Let's see how uh, how we go. Scott Haggard, you would have seen him on the 7 p.m. project campaigning against agent underquoting. Scott is an expert negotiator through and through. Every <laughs> single day, he is negotiating with real estate agents to get the best price for his clients. 
To give you a bit of a background, Scott has been working in real estate since 1995 and as a real estate agent built up three Bell franchises. He was the guy teaching the agent all the tips and tricks to get the most out of the buyers. However, Scott realized that there was actually no one on the side of the person buying the property and he saw them constantly letting emotion get in the way and paying way over for the property. And that's why he created Hello House, Australia's first property negotiation as a service business where he is on the side of the buyer. In hot markets like we have now, you need absolutely every single edge that you can get. These agents are trained professionals and they are there to get the most money out of you, which is why you need to have an expert of your own in your own corner. The way it works, you find the property, then Scott will come in at the negotiation phase and take over for you. This is how you will get the property for its true value. He'll ensure that you don't overpay. He comes in, knocks a real estate agent down on price, no more agent games, no more tricks, no more tactics. He is there for you. Scott has been kind enough to offer us an amazing discount on his service, and I've personally just seen a friend pay $20,000 more on a property because of these agent games. Reach out to him with the link below. It will be the best property investment you will ever make. Excellent, Joe. Mate, uh, I, I, I feel, I, I think, I think eventually we'll, we will buy you a, a new, a new uh, laptop. But uh, no, fantastic to, to have that. Set. And and I suppose one of the one of the reasons we have Scott as a sponsor <laughs> is because I remember negotiating. I'll, I'll talk about negotiation in this and how I sort of somewhat got swindled. I'm not swindled, but uh, but yeah, I, I didn't I didn't knock it out of the park. But that's okay because. The um, the property that um, I mean it's 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 done all right. The one we'll talk about it. Joe built it up so much. So Joe, get, let's uh, you do an intro for me. I, I want to like pump me up. Talk talk about me. You know everything about me. You know my deepest and darkest secrets. Intro I me. Don't, I hope I don't. I hope I. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, no. So we are in for a little treat today. Okay, so I I, I alluded to it this uh, this afternoon in my little post. So um yeah, you know. This is going to be a warts and all presentation, right? Like when when we are buying property, um, we've made mistakes. We've both made mistakes. I've made some pretty big mistakes um, that um, I still have in my portfolio. Be a bit of a lesson, but also there's no point in selling it because I'm not going to get anything out of it. I'm going to have you know negative, not negative equity or cash flow, but it's just going to be one of those things. So it's not about me. Today is all about Jeff. So Jeff has run a um, run a couple of deals, got a couple of developments, um, and has some property on the go. But his first couple of deals uh, are what we're going to cover off today. So we're going to dive in. So if anyone has any questions relating, pop them in the comments. This is a Jeff and Joe, what are we, Property Brothers um, session. So 2.0. Are... Yeah, yeah. So, mate, is that a good enough intro for you? I don't know. I feel like you could have said, well, he's, he's, a, he's a multi-million dollar property investor. He's done done multiple development deals. He's about to, he's, he's cracking on. He's got a goal to be financially, I was disappointed. He didn't ask for five points. So that's like, I'll, I'll just, next time I'll intro myself. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, 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 done. well done. let's let's get going. Let's get let's get cracking. <laughs> let's let's set the agenda for tonight. And uh, so if you can flip to the next slide, mate, it's going to get annoying. I'm going to tell you every time I want a new slide. How, how, how? Should we should we get full screen? Can you do full screen that, on that one, or is that is that too is that kind of oh, it's probably too hard. Yeah, do no, that, no. and we can we can we can we can swing back when we need to look up some data. So on on the Jennifer's Night Life, actually done that. I, I, what I'm going to present to you is because I see a lot, I still see a lot of people asking, should I buy in Richmond or should I buy in Redland Redland Bay? I just picked two R suburbs out, a reservoir. In, if you're in down in Victoria, I believe it's reservoir Victoria or Rockhampton. There's another one. Uh, there's our suburbs around for all my favorite our suburb of yours in the comments but um yeah so but i see that and i'm like okay let's actually give let's give the audience i'll unpack something that i, I, I drop on the comments occasionally and i'll talk people through it and and hopefully people um, i know people will get heaps of value out of it and then i've got two case studies on properties that i've purchased as buy and hold purchases one of the one opposite ends of the spectrum is actually the the last property i bought and the first one as buy and hold at least um so so it'll give you a bit of a, a an evolution of my journey so you can you can throw questions at me some what what i did why i did it how i did it um and and why i'm not doing what yeah so and then we've got an education versus implementation we'll see how we go i just want to answer questions so as well so we might not get to that one that was just a, if we 
So let's get to the framework, Jack. Let's do it. Let's dive yeah, in. Say next slide. Next slide. Oh, your oh. questions. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we recently want your questions because we want this to be interactive. So we'll answer them along the way as, as, if we see them. Or Joe can look at the questions or comments if he wants, um, as the, or, the, or the tomatoes we're throwing at me. So furry questions, comments, and but first up, the actionable framework for your property puzzle. Now, Joe, do you want to kind of? I don't want to just be a monologue. I want. I want to. I want you actually kind of ask me questions or. What are, you, what, are, what are your thoughts so far? What do you want to What do you want to hear about here, Joe? What do you think? Well, this is actually quite an interesting stat that that you've put up here, um, which kind of blew my mind when I first looked at it um, a few years ago. And this is, I think, done in 2018 by RP Data, so it is a reliable source. Um, but well, what is it saying? Of the 20% of people who are property investors, 71% of the people own one investment property. Um, which is crazy, like just just one. And I think the reason for that is all of these um, not so great property investments out there, all these property vehicles like house and land packages, off the plan, those type of things, people purchase them and get stuck, right? Kind of like what we're going to talk about with your, you know, warts and all story, you kind of get stuck on them. So um, I'm super pumped to kind of cover off some of the lessons that you've learned, mate. But um, yeah. I mean, so, so I could have, the reason I left that there from this is from a presentation we did. So I think it, it's important to, to really have it at home that you can, it is easy to become one of the statistics and, and you can sort of, I'll, I'll talk through my first property, my four end of property investment and, and, I, and I'll share the suburb, I'll share the purchase price, I'll share roughly what it's worth now. Um, so I won't share the address because, um, or actually if you <laughs> want to buy it, I mean, if, you, if you want to pay me 400000 for it, let, let me know now. I've, I've got a, I've got a deal of century for you. Well, I'll even throw in some steak knives. Um, no, no. But in all seriousness, if somebody would offer me that, I would. Uh, let's sign the contract tonight. Um, but, but no, we're not, they're not soliciting, and we're not providing financial advice here, either, folks. So these aren't, and these aren't suburbs I'm saying to go in, go into either, because one, I can kind of, I'll unpack as the reasons why um, I probably wouldn't necessarily look at these suburbs now. But before we get to that, I've teased you so much. So I want to give you, I want to give you the gold, I want to give you the value. So I want to give you a framework. So for those of you watching and listening at home, oh, here's take some notes. So def define exact, here's how rather than saying I want to should I invest in X suburb or Y suburb, you should define exactly what you want to achieve. And this is a mistake I made early on. I, I, I said I wanted capital growth and yield. And I was and, and that's I, I went to the person, I was handing over the keys in my financial mm -hmm. future. And and that's what I said, and that's that's what they sort of tried to get, tried to give me. So, but I, so this yeah. is you're talking about your first property, are you? Correct. Yeah, that's right. The second one, I I I, I picked it myself, or second buy, the uh, the last buy and hold we did, I, I picked it myself, right? So I didn't have to. I went to myself, and I mean, I kind of went through this process. So, for example, a lot of people say they want 100k. I'm 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 kind of aiming on 3x that, and I, I want that 3x by 2026. So 3x of 100k, you work out the sums. 300k for those of you who don't want to have to work it out. I've had a few wines. So I want 300k by 2026 residual income. Um, so that's that's bloody ambitious, I know. It's, um, and so, but people they focus on buying the property first. So they don't think of where they want to go. They just they just think, okay, great. I want I want I want to buy a property in, in X suburb or Y suburb. And then, so, then the next. Thing, yeah. So what were your goals then, right? So you you went up to a buyer's. So you're like, okay, great. I need to buy a property. Um, yep. And you approached a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. And what did you say to him? Hey, buy me a property? Or how did it go down? Yeah, well, it, it kind of, it, it went down, and this is 2015. Mm -hmm. So it, it sort of, um, it, it literally just went, went went the way of, they said, well, what, what are you hoping to achieve? And I said, I want to buy a property that's um, worth X amount and and has X amount of cap. Or, or no, I, I didn't say that. I just said I want a property that gives me capital growth and cash flow. So that was that was right. my and that was kind of early, early days in my journey. So I mean, we could even do a whole session on that. So actually, but, uh, so actually, that's a really good point that you've made there. It, do you think that would be like the outcome would be different if you chose? We're not going to name the buyer's agent, the the buyer's agency that you went with, obviously. Um, right. But do you think it would have changed the purchase if you would have gone in there with a bit more of a structured plan, um, or do you just think? Yeah, I, I, sorry, sorry to kind of cut you off there and, and steal your thunder, but um, yeah, it, it definitely would have, and and um, because the the, re the reason it would have is because I um, 
I, I would have actually said, I would have pushed back and said, well, how, how is this property you presented to me, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer's agent, how is that, how is that achieving my goal? Um, and even, if, 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 I didn't even ask the question, how is this property achieving capital growth or how is it probably going to achieve capital growth? Um, I, I, I just accepted it at face value and, and, um, and, and, and right off into the sunset, right? We go and make money, but we don't always go and make money. So, I, I, oh, man, I, we're, already 20, we're already 15 minutes now. We're supposed to keep this 45 to, to 60 minutes. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to hammer through these, uh, these points. Hammer through them, mate. Yeah, hammer, hammer time, baby. Um, so the, uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to ask yourself what your current capacity is, and, and that, that can be your deposit and how much you can borrow as well. Um, so once you've got that, then you can say, okay, that, that's the maximum. Um, and, and, then, and then you've got that, you've got, uh, then that narrows down the areas because a lot of people say, oh, yeah, Sydney, Melbourne, but if you can only borrow 500000 I don't know about you, but you might be able to pick up one, one, uh, one eighth of a parking, parking spot in Sydney. Um, but I don't, it's not getting you much more than that 500K borrowing capacity. So that leads into, leads into the next point, which is pick three or five, three or five areas. Um, and, and really, I, I, I implore you to not just pick one area, but pick a couple and then say, and, and, and based on that, you then sort of look, will look at uh, factors such as supply and demand, um, which, which is your employment, your income and growth, which all can be found for free in ABS data. And even more recent as well, there's, there's probably a whole bunch of free data sources out there. And then you then you dig deeper into things like days on market, stock on market, vendor discounting, owner-occupied versus investor, rental vacancy rates. So I'm not saying these are the only things you should look at, but this is the initial kind of search. Really do a data deep dive. Um, and, and then once, you, once you've kind of, I'm just looking at the screen there to see what, see what I wrote there. But the next thing is once you've once you started to get a feel for these suburbs and eliminated it and sort of start to say, and, and we could go. We could send a whole session on what metrics are actually good metric. Uh, what's a, what's a good metric? I think we should do that, Joe. Eventually, we will do that. Yeah. Well, I was actually thinking about that um, the other day. There's so many free platforms out there that that aggregate. So, like the ABS data is really good, um, but it's just a bit ugly. There are really good free platforms that um, give it to you all in, in a nice, like laid out drop down. So we might share some of those. Um, share some of those. What are some of the data metrics that you guys track? Pop that in the comments. It would be good cool to hear what, like, what unique, what something different that you guys track. Um, and so, you track you, and yeah, well, yeah, more most importantly, why you track them. Um, so, just trying to understand what we've put down here. So, what you're saying here is set your goals first, right? Know exactly what your end goal is. If you want to get to here, how are you going to get to here? I like to call um, it like the before, there's a thing in marketing called before after bridge. This is where you are before, here's where you are after, and then you got to build a bridge to get there. But if you don't know where you're looking to go, um, anywhere is going to get you there. So understanding what your borrowing capacity is, so that narrows down your focus. Then you pick three to five areas based on the impacts of capital growth, which I feel like we kind of brush, brushed over, and that is one big session in itself. Um, yeah. And then track the markets for three to six months. That's, yeah, that's a lot of time, mate. I know, and 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 um, and a lot of people say you've got to be kidding me, right? Like, why, why in, in three or six months the market's going to move? It's going to move five. It's going it's going to go up, go to the moon. It's going to it's going to be worth like double. And I mean, it's not going to be worth double, of course. But let's let's say for, let's say for example, there are some markets out there that are moving two to three percent per month. A lot of markets are. Um, so. And 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 when people say it to me, I'm like, okay, great. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. If I'm doing a buy and hold, or even if I'm doing a development deal, I'm doing a renovation deal. I'm, I'm not looking to rush this decision because I'm, I'm investing hundreds of thousands, maybe some people millions of dollars into this property. I, I, I kind of, if it goes up to a three percent, yeah, sure, great, okay. It, it, if that that's that that's that for me is is part and parcel of, of actually saying I understand that market and I'm comfortable with the decision that I've made with this property because if you if you rush that you're likely to jump in and and it could impact your capital growth if you buy in the wrong part of a suburb you could put, you could cost yourself uh, cost yourself 10 to 15 percent over <laughs> you could cost yourself a lot more than that um, in capital growth so I don't know like it's it's kind of people say well, you either you either take the short-term pain for long-term gain or you take the lo the long-term pain for short-term gain if you kind of have FOMO into something. Um, right. So, I'll, yeah, that's that's what that's – and I'll, I'll, I'll share a spreadsheet that I did with purchasing a prop, the property that we own here in Unandera as well. <laughs> It'll show exactly what, what I track. Should I go next slide then? 
Next slide. Um, but before we do that, Joe, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little scared here, man, because this is this is uncomfortable for me because I'm, I'm sharing a. a I'm, just gonna fuck, I'm, gonna say, I'm sharing a fuck up here. I don't. I don't like squaring on the, squaring on the show, but uh, bloody Jeff there, we're standing in front of his property. I think I do, did actually have a, a photo of me sitting in front. So this is my property in Zilmi. So if you live in Queensland, you can you can <coughs> figure out where where it is in Zilmi. But um, I haven't put the address up. But, um, so this is Warts and all we're, we're sharing. So I bought this this, this uh, town home, two bed, two bath, back in 2015. Um, so kind of maybe, yeah. So I bought it for 334,000, which will um, which we'll see on the next slide. But um, you don't have don't to go to the next slide yet. No, go, go go back to this one because I want to I want to talk through this person. So um, we'll talk. Through, I'll talk. <laughs> I'll talk through um, how I actually did it, the process involved, and, and the research right. that I did. So I uh, I started my property journey way back in uh, in 2011. I know that's ages ago. What the heck was I doing waiting four years? I spoke. I mean, it was probably 2012. So I started going to free seminars as we all do. We're seminar junkies. We go and we like information soak up, soak it up like a sponge, and we just don't we don't take action. We're like oh, you know, I'm getting somewhere. It feels good. It feels good. Information, more information in, more information. And then, and then we, and then I thought, you know, I started looking in 2013 in, in the Mount Druid. You know, I, I did the classic look in the area that you live, um, and yeah. and then and then somebody said to me there was a there was a unit for about two hundred thousand in Mount Druid, which is almost doubled now. Uh, most of that growth was in three or four years, mind you. Um, but they said to me, oh Jeff, you should save up more of a deposit. Um, and, and and so they said. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get too risky and all this kind of thing. So I had this kind of this scarcity, like fear-based mindset. So that's what stopped me from getting. And then 2015 rolled around. So did you? Yeah, did you um go down the off the plan or house and land package route? Like, was that a, an adventure you you went through or? Um, I mean, I, I did go to a few seminars where they were selling that stuff. Um, but it, it was it was never something that, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't. I, I, there was definitely sales pitches out there, but I, I wasn't. Um, and then this ten years ago, there was um, there was a lot more cowboys out there um, and kind of scary stuff happening. I'm not saying it doesn't happen now, but hopefully there's there's less of it, less and less these days. Well, I think there's a lot more education out there, like like um, all these podcasts, groups like this, right? Like um, people can get a whole lot more educated very quickly um, about these type of programs. And the, the the challenge that we we have with this group is that. You know the big the people with the that make a whole lot of money, like forty, fifty thousand dollars out of an off the plan apartment. They have money to spend on marketing, so they do all this massive mail dumps and and oh, they're all over the social media. And it's like, oh well, this must be the best thing. And then we're kind of hidden away in the in the fanatic section um, about uh, good investments. So it's hard it's hard to get out there. Yeah, it's it's a thing you go to your um, I think it's a thing you go to your friend with, you know. So in, we're we're the group that you go and ask your friend about when you want that special secret sourcing. Um, I don't know, not Ooh. saying we're secret source. Yeah, so okay. but, uh, yeah, so twenty fifth, fast forward to twenty fifteen. So I had conversations with a couple of buyers agents. One that was um, um, questionable. They're still around. But, um, <laughs> yeah, they are still around. But um, so I, what I made them questionable? What 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 was like? What was the little uh, Oh, hair well, on the it, back of your neck situation. It was, it, was, it was super hard sell. Like you had to make a decision right on the spot. It's like, oh, if you don't make a decision today, there's like four properties we've got, and you know, you, and it was just. And I was, I was only what 23, 24 at the time, and I was like, oh shit, I, I felt really uncomfortable saying no. I was like, yeah. oh gee, like, and and but I, I managed to sort of weasel my way out of that and just say, oh, look, let me let me think about it, and I sort of, and I, I just, yeah, it was um, wow, it, it was quite intimidating because they sort of, and sometimes they used to take you to their office and they they get you in a room and kind of not not like i wouldn't say not let you until you'd signed up but um yeah it was, um, yeah there's some, there's some there's some true horror stories out there like um yeah they, like the the pressure selling is is real for sure um yeah. so okay so that was the first guy so that that left a bad taste in your mouth um but why did you decide in the first place that you needed a buyer's agent anyway like why don't you just go out there and do this stuff yourself you, you've gone to the seminars you've got educated do it yeah. yourself well, so I suppose I, I wasn't taking action. So the, uh, ah. the I, I kind of said, well, hey, I can either I can spin my wheels for another two years because, as I said, I was looking in 2013, didn't buy anything, and thought, well, what the heck? What is my problem? Well, what, what is my problem? My problem was I was I was I didn't have a framework. I didn't have my clear goals. I I was just sort of going looking at property for 400,000. I was looking at property for 
two hundred thousand. I was looking. I was like, what did I actually want? I, I was sort of looking at houses and units, and I was, I was like, I didn't, I didn't know what I want. So if you don't know what you yeah. want, everything will do. And then you sort of kind of like, well, I'm going to make a mistake. So that's um, so fast forward twenty fifteen. Um, engaged the buyers <laughs> agents, um, and and then sort of had. Well, the- hang on, you, you you skipped a bit of gold here. Like what? What was the next step, right? What was this buyer's agent process? How did it look? Who were well, not who were they? Don't tell us who they are because this is not a good story. This is the warts and all story. But how did they well, hook you in? Well, I mean, I mean, it wasn't. There was no hard selling. Um, it was. It was all my own kind of decision, and and that's probably what made it. What made me feel more comfortable. Um, and and look, I, I won't. The, the thing with this property is, it's not. It, it's been. It, it serves some purpose, but it just hasn't really been the property you want as your first property. Um, and, and we'll kind of see why it shouldn't be the first property that you, that you should have. Um, but the process was was nice and sort of seamless. It was a, it was a simple coffee catch up and what do, what do you sort of, what do you want from property and, and kind of very like, here's, here's our service, here's what we do. Um, and, and I didn't ask enough questions. Um, knowing what I know now, I mean, and, and not to say that, look, I'm sure they've purchased some great properties for, for some people, this company. Um, but, yeah. but this one hasn't really worked out that well for me to be um, to be very transparent about it. Um, yeah, yeah, so that, that was, does that answer your question about the process or what, what more do you want to, is there anything else you want to know? Or? Well, I think there's some good insights there because um, one thing to be aware of is that this is not an off-the-plan apartment. You were not purchasing, no. this was a secondhand property. So... Um, 2009. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So you need to be a little bit more like, so there are spruikers out there, but then there's also buyers agents in an area that, that just don't buy good properties. Like, like yeah. Jeff said, you have to have that, that goal set up. So, um, if you don't mind me stealing, um, taking, taking a little bit of, uh, thunder here, Jeff is, um, we, we made those questions to ask buyers agent. I want to run them by you really quickly and see, uh, what your thoughts are on them? Are you yeah, cool yeah. with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So um, this is the four, was it fourteen? Fourteen questions that we use to save people from sharks, pretty much. So the first one is, um, how are you getting paid? Yeah. So did I ask that question or? No, that's what I asked. That's what you asked. That's what you meant to ask them. I, I guess oh, we okay. haven't really we haven't really done well with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, well, I'm well, just well, gonna, Am I supposed to answer this question or am I supposed to say whether I, what's the... No, what are your... Okay, I'm just going to oh. rattle the questions. Ask these questions and then we'll jump through the slide. I'm jump, I've am oh, thrown yeah. a curveball here. It hasn't worked. It's no, failed no, no, miserably. I, I, I know what you're doing now. So, so my thoughts on that though, Joe, are that um, you really have to understand I, if you're paying a fee for service, it's it's probably better or not probably, it is better. Um, yeah. But if you, if, they're, if, they're, if, you, if their service is free, then you are the product. Basically. Boom. That's good. That's some gold there. Perfect. The, the next one is what kickbacks do you get from brokers and other professionals? Yeah, I, I, I don't actually, I'll, I'll let you answer some of these as well, but I'll, I'll take this one. You take next two. So yeah. um, I don't have necessarily have issues with kickbacks. Um, I mean, when I say kickbacks, everybody's got to make a, make a living somehow. So, um, yeah. but it's, it's more about, okay, is there, is there kind of, is there an arm's length um, transaction and, and kind of disclosure as well, 100% disclosure, like, can I do I have to go with this person because you'll get a kickback from them? Well, kind of that's 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 my kind of mindset. So exactly. Afraid. So so like <clears throat> a good example of this is you go to a buyer's agent, you're fresh, you're new, you don't know anything. Um, and then oh hey, go get a solicitor, go get a mortgage broker, um, and and go out there and we'll buy this property. And you're like, Well, what the heck is that? I don't know how to do that. Hey, I you know, I have my own team and you can go with them. So they work under an umbrella. They'll work together, and they'll he'll give him they'll give each other leads. So there would be kickbacks in that. But the 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 question you want to know is: Are these people going to be truthful and tell me that? I want people because this is an open communication. You've got a relationship with these people. You're going to be paying them anywhere from nine to fifteen thousand dollars. So you need to make sure that um, you're going to have good communication. Um, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to cover. I'm going to move on from that. The couple of, I'm not going to do all of them because you guys can view them all. Um, you can even, uh, okay, cool. Well, How long is- I can actually drop the comment, drop the post and the links in the comments. So, yeah, you, you speak about a couple and I'll drop the comment. Okay, cool. Um, do you, okay, cool. So, have you, uh, how long have you been personally investing in property? Um, so, it'll be good to hear your views on this, Jeff. But I think if you're going to go with an investment buyer's agent, they're going to want to have some wins under their belt. 
Like they're going to have to have purchased properties and understand what the buying process is. If they don't and they're coming to you and say, hey, I've, you know, I've got um, a portfolio of, of one property, maybe it's not the best. Now, if they have experience back as a buyer's agent working for somebody else and they've got some more experience in that way and they've been buying property, it's just not the investment vehicle that they use, maybe that's good. But if someone says, hey, I've got no properties at all and, I, and I'm not really interested in property, why are you a buyer's agent? Um, so it's good to get the, like their understanding. Then you have buyer's agents that have 15, 20 properties under their belt. They're probably pretty passionate about property investing. Um, any thoughts on that one, Jeff, that I haven't covered off? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say so. I mean, um, I, I think it's it's more about where, where is the proven track record? Because yeah. if, if, somebody's bought, if somebody's bought one property, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I pers- and, they've, and they've held it for... I don't know, six months, uh, what, how are they qualify, any more qualified than you to buy your great property? Um, but, and, and I'm all for people, like people have got to learn somehow, but I, I'm, not, I'm, not paying, I'm not paying somebody 9000 for, for them to loan um, is my exactly. mindset. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. Let's jump on. Let's move on. 2015, Zilmir, let's have a look. What, what have we got? Oh, God. How did, how did it go? So, so what, 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 what we've got here is we've got, so this is the property that was, so it was purchased, it was sold back, and this is this is a bit of a lesson, a red flag for me, and it's kind of um, and it's kind of why I say three six months. And I, 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 I sneaked a peek at the comments, and I saw Jerry said three six months is a long time. Um, you use um, use use suburb trends, and and my my objection to that, Jerry, and and for the people out there is, you you, you yes, data is great, it's important, but it doesn't give you the pockets, the areas of the suburbs. It doesn't give you that data is fantastic and people people swear and they'll only buy based on data. That's great for them. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a look at the data and then I, I, for my comfort level, I need to understand the suburb, the pockets, because um, do, making, making that mistake um, kind of has cost me in, in this property. So, if look, if you're an experienced investor, fantastic. Go based on data. You don't want to need that three six months, but for me, so what's the alternative? Yeah, okay. So you, what you're saying is you need to be like watching the market growing as it's as it's happening live in the action for yeah, those yeah, or, or at least understanding <laughs> value in the market because if if you've only looked at a market for two weeks, how the heck do you know that you okay you, you're going to make an offer for you're going to make an offer three hundred uh, for five hundred thousand. How, how do you actually know that that property that the, the compa- you're not over pay- not paying through the nose for a property, um, which which if you pay too much for a property, um, and 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 something will argue, yeah. well, I get yeah, you. I, yeah, 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 yeah. So what do we got here in front of us? Um, I've seen something very very interesting. This property was yeah. built in 2009 for oh, for three hundred and fifty seven thousand. Yeah, and and we, we picked this up for three hundred thirty four thousand in in two thousand and fifteen in April twenty fifteen. So you sort of say, yeah, sure, you look awesome. You got a bargain. Like how how good is that? Like happy days, like un- under market value, and all these kind of yeah. like, cool terms. Twenty three thousand five hundred dollar discount. Yeah, that's plus, that's almost ten percent. Yeah, plus those people would have paid stamp duty. So these people are now down by purchasing an off the plan apartment fifty thousand dollars. Which is their deposit? They would have lost their entire deposit because they purchased this house off the plan, and it looks great for you. I bet. I bet you were super pumped. You're like, "Oh my gosh, I've got a property that's worth five hundred and fifty-seven thousand five hundred. I'm getting a steal here." Well, that's that, that's that's the thing, Joe. I, I I didn't even look at this. Like that, I, oh. I didn't say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That this is this is how much. And, and and I wasn't even informed of this by by the buyers agent. So these are the kind of things. And and I, and I, I'm sort of I'm being a bit picky in terms of. I mean, these are just two properties I've purchased. So, but these are the kind. And, and Sam James Nguyen is a big advocate. Of this. He actually goes back and looks at has the property transacted and has it doubled in, in since the last time it sold. Not doubled, but has what what was the price it sold for last time it sold? And is it at least twelve years? Pre- are there comparables 12 years past to kind of see how much it has grown now of course past performance doesn't reflect future performance so you can't guarantee but uh i think the his- um, history doesn't repeat itself but it sure does rhyme as they say okay nice. so um, so let's let, let's dig into zilmi and and look at i was i was trying to get onto kent to give us the um um, give us the numbers from back in 2015 to sort of look at the supply back then but if you could bring up zilmi on suburb trends and I'll, I'll kind of talk through this. I'll get it up on my screen as well. Oh, this is, because... going, to be, this is going to be an interesting one if it actually works. Okay, so we've got Zilmi here, mate. 
Um, yep. So how's it how's it how's it looking anyway? Is it oh, I can see it now on your end. It doesn't yep. seem to be loading. I can share it on my end if it if it's no no. I've got it here. Um, this is live, folks. So you do hear of other podcasts <laughs> that Yeah. It okay. is live. You know, it is, it yeah, is it. filming. Yep, that's the one. So if if you if you look at purely the unit, yeah, that's it. Make it make it bigger, mate. That's what she okay. said. So hang on. Let's let's do what let's do what um Mr. Kent Lardner told us to do. He told us so to look at the SA three level. Yep. So he told us to look at the housing inventory and then look at the housing listings and see what it's going. And he said anything under three is a tight market. Oh, so this go, only goes back to June 2019. Can I can I stop you there though? Go go go! Ignore the houses because there's this this will be one of my lessons. So go go to units, mate. I didn't I didn't I didn't buy a house, and if I'd have bought a house, mate, different conversation, completely different conversation. Look at really? that inventory of the units. Look at look at look at the listings. They're going up. Look at the unit price. It's absolutely going nowhere. It's it's basically yeah. So you you can you can sort of see the the that amount is a flat of line. Mate, it's dead. It might as well just man. Yeah, it's it's um and and, so and that's, frustrating. And, and and this is why I wanted to get the 2015 data to sort of compare the unit and and and, and so if you look at those unit listings even back in 20, 2019, it was at 150, but it hasn't come there's so many listings in the area and, and go up to the top, which is the stock of the inventory. So I think the inventory was is, is that seven back in 2019? Yeah, well, yeah, about seven, yeah. If you, if you hover over it, actually tell you what it is. Hover over the dot, seven point oh four. So if you look, even if you look at, let's let's look at it now. So July twenty twenty one. What I think that looks like about six point something. Yeah, it's six, about a six point eight, six point seven. Five point four nine. So oh. yeah, that's, <laughs> if you look at yeah, if you look at it's yeah. below the six. So yeah. So, yeah. but having said that, it, it did dip a little bit, and and I did see. So, if you if you tried to sell back in July 20, 2019, you uh, this property would have sold for about three hundred ten thousand, I would say. Um, now you could probably sell it for about three thirty, maybe three forty, if you're lucky. Um, but I, I see brand new ones coming onto the market, brand new units selling for about three sixty, three seventy. Um, and this is this is brand new. So, why is anybody going to pay more than three seventy, three eighty? For a for a, a property that's so my property that's twelve years old, why are they paying any anything more than maybe three twenty three thirty, right? Yeah, look at the inventory levels. Look at it. Hey, it's, it's, um, it's, it's off the charts. It's, well, look at that. Twelve months ago, was it 10? ten? Yeah, ten. Yeah, I know. So a tight market is um, three. So if we look at the houses in the area, this is looking pretty deep. Like it's looking right. pretty decent. It's not. And, it's and, not. And, it's not great, but it's it's still a still probably a seller's market, I would say, or, or ba balanced market probably. Yeah. As as a yeah, so that's that's why I wanted to bring up this. Um, and if you look at the narrative, that'll that'll it'll illustrate exactly what I've what I've sort of just been saying about houses sort of saying. Oh, let's I think go it's, to units. Let's go to units. Yeah, yeah. But um, Buy so she says minus. Yeah. A minus one percent. Look, the, the the days on market has come down significantly. That 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 was um, when I was back in the days. When I was looking at the property magazines. That was at sort of one hundred and ten days to sell a unit. Now, so it's so the so the the days on market has has dropped significantly. But the thing about it is this: there's a lot of what, what's what's happening, and, and I'll I'll tell it in in my in the in the um. Let's kind of go back to our PowerPoint slide, Joe. Unless there's something else you want to you want to pop on, but um, that'll I think that tells enough of the story. So the um, the next yeah, jump on. So this is this is a lesson. So this it's, it's loading up here, but so and th this is absolutely vital. I think for any any suburb, any market. But this this kind of area, the even even your Chermside, your Tagums, your um, your Zilmis, your Astleys, those parts of the you have to understand that. And this is why I I, I recommend saying three to six months to understand an area. I know we just looked at the data, but the data can be a bit skew if I mean that's pretty obvious so you probably don't need to need for six months to say look the data is probably not looking good for units or townhouses um, but you really need to understand the market you're buying into what, what's actually in high demand um, because if there's so many the one thing we didn't look at there was approvals 
approvals were off the charts for units in um, in, in Zilmi. It's going to be too much to go back to it, but so there's there's not there's not a there's not, not going to be a su- end of supply coming on anytime soon. So how much is it? How, we've got a question here. How much is it renting for? Three fifty a week. So and that's that's what it rented for when it first started. So it actually had oh, really? to drop. The, yeah, so I had to drop the rent. So everybody's like, oh, rents are booming. You're probably, Rents are booming in the areas where there's where there's not a lot of because a brand new one you could rent for three seventy three eighty. So again, why is somebody going to pay three seventy three eighty for my twelve year old property that I've just had to, that I just spent um, eleven hundred on replacing the carpets? Which I mean, happy to do that. Whatever. I mean, that's part of part and parcel. You got to send money to kind of eat your tenants, I suppose. So five point four five gross yield so that looks that kind of looks pretty good on paper yeah but But it hasn't got that growth story and this is the problem that i see time and time again with people when they buy um a property that they can't add value to that's already at its peak value for their first couple of properties you need to go for that capital appreciation you need to start like an extra yeah this might be positively geared and you're getting an extra 50 bucks in your pocket but is that changing your life jeff probably not i tell you what what would have is an extra 200 grand in your pocket to be able to leverage and go into your next property. But you didn't get that because you bought a terrible dud. And I'm sorry, mate. Well, I have to say it. <laughs> but when, when, the, 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 the lesson I want to hammer home is um, regardless of property one, um, because a lot of people would, would have this experience and they'd say, you know what? Yeah, I give up. This is why yeah. 70% only buy one property because it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, Jeff. Yeah, and, and you sort of say, and and, and I, I, I really, I had to get, do a bit of soul searching for for a couple of years here, and and I sort of thought, you know, this property thing was supposed, to, it's, it's just, you know, property doubles in X amount of time, and it's, mm-hmm. it's you're on easy street when you get a property, and it's just kind of these pipe dreams you get to kind of solve from a lot of podcasts, and and even we, we do a little bit here on us on, on our thing because we get people on that are inspirational, and don't get me wrong, we, we're going to kick Joe and I are going to kick massive goals, we are kicking massive goals. But um, but it's it's kind of you have to um, consider that even if property one doesn't perform, it's the the game is not over because a lot of people are, and and if, even if property one does perform fantastically, because a lot of people are sitting on some good gains in the last 12, 18, 24 months. I would say that be, be careful of the rising rising tide, uh, right, rising all ships, mm-hmm. right. So be yeah. careful to think that you're just an investing, you're the next Warren Buffett of property, right. Um, yeah. Just because you've picked one winner or you've picked a couple of winners doesn't mean that you, you don't need to kind of still dig deep and do the research. So that's go. we've, got another, we've got another question from the audience around the LVR. Um, yeah. um, what LVR did you use your savings for the deposit? No. So um, that's a fun, funny, funny, interesting story. So I, I purchased this back in the day. You could always say back in the day. Gee, make me sound old. Um, so I, I, I actually did this at 108% LVR. Um, and how the heck did you do that? Jeff. How do you yeah, get so, to 108? So, so I borrowed. Maybe it wasn't 108. It's 105 percent. So I borrowed even the stamp duty too. So I always had to put no money because I used the guarantor for this. So um, that's and and I took I take that responsibility very seriously. So I, I don't I don't, I don't take this lightly. I, I've still got the guarantor. So I've, I'm paying principal and interest. So a lot of people ask me, oh, you know, interest, I was paying interest only for the first two years, and then I realised, you know what, this property is not. It's not uh, not all it's cracked up to be. I, I need to get that guarantor off. That I want to get that guarantor off the loan. I'm going to start going to start um, juicing some equity. So I'm sort of starting to make some headway into the loan now, and, and reducing just reducing that LVR. So um, yeah, that's and and, and it, it does kneecap you to some extent because you can't then leapfrog into property two. And and I know I, I, did, I bought another property in 2016. Um, it wasn't, but it was more through more creative methods. Beautiful. Um, okay. That's well, we, so there's some there's some pretty good lessons there, right? This is what I like about you, Jeff. Is you had a shit experience. It was not a good investment, and most people, based on seventy percent of the people, would have said, "You know what? This is not my game. I'm going to move on to something else. I'm going to buy crypto." But then again, if you bought crypto <laughs> in 2015, you would be doing really, really, really well. So maybe that would be the better option. Um, but you stuck to your guns. Investors, and like, though, not all crypto investors. I'm going to get better at this. I'm going to get better at this property game. And I'm pretty excited about what the heck is this one? And what are yeah. you holding? Then? Yeah, so I'm holding the key. This this is actually on settlement day. So, you know, this kind of cheesy photo you're taking from the science. Like, oh, sold. I've just bought the property. That's kind of like the – I didn't want to do the the, the sales, the sold sign. Um, but, yeah, this is um, – 
So before we do that, Jeff, should we should we sponsor it? Because this one's going to be bloody juicy. I, I want to kind of, I want to go, I want to, I want to share helps a heap of value on this one. So should we do yeah. Mr. The One, The Only, Khaleesi? Oh, Is that God. Okay, well, you need, to, you need to give Joseph. me more time. You need to give me more time than that. To <laughs> get <this. laughs> oh, sh- not Scott Agat. You got you got to stop sharing your. Uh, your I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Wait a second, we need to. We oh, need yeah. that, huh? This is all live, folks. Yeah, if this is not pre-recorded. Um, if you did, if you didn't tell, so I'm loving the interaction, the engagement. If if people want to, I, I kind of want Joe to. I want to get Joe in the hot seat. Um, he's in the hot seat right now. Sorry, Joe. I really put you on the spot. It's one of those areas that confuses many people probably because of the risks involved, but it's also one of the few asset classes that can give you a very positive cash flow from day one. With commercial property, you get some massive net yields of six to 10%. Now that's not gross, that's net, which means it's cash in your pocket. This is what makes them so amazing. Your property can actually pay itself off within 10 years, grow in value, and without having you to chip in any cash at all. Now, with big rewards comes some big risk which is why you should de-risk your investment as much as possible. The way you do this is with expert due diligence. This is why we highly recommend hiring professionals to help you along in your investing journey. Steve Polisi of Polisi Property is one such expert. He is one of Australia's top commercial property buyers agent with his own multi-million dollar property portfolio of a mix of commercial and residential. Steve has over 1,200 property transactions under his belt. He's the guy you want in your corner, crunching the numbers, finding the best properties in the best location, along with the ways to avoid the dud properties. Steve has even been the one to write the book on commercial property investing in Australia, and it's a bestseller. He's been generous enough to give us a massive discount to our audience of 50% with the code OZPROP. Click the link below, get a copy today, and start your commercial property investing journey. That was that, that was pretty that was impressive, Joe. Well done, man. Thanks, mate. Yeah, let's, your, we'll, we'll... Your, your deal is impressive. So I'm ready <laughs> to do that. Yeah. So let's let's see. Uh, let's let's let, let's dig in, man. And there are some I can see some questions pop up, but um I, I will we'll, we'll get to some of those because I think I think it's important that we acknowledge the questions eventually. But um, so go 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 back to the first slide, Joe, because you, you kind of you, you're killing the story. I'm, I'm going to build it up, and I'm going to kind of wow people. I mean, that I'm this investing wizard now. I'm not really, but um, so this this one. So this this was a couple of years on after some education. We're we're about to kick off Oz Property Investors actually. So um, this one was was purchased on. It's a suburb of the South Coast in Wollongong kind of region. So um, look, we we I, I I took some lessons away from buying a couple of properties since then, and I said, okay, look, here's what we're actually looking to achieve. Here's our budget. Here's here's our goals. Um, here's how much we're going to spend. Um, look, I, I I didn't do this wasn't purely investments. Um, so I didn't do all the kind of metrics that matter. But I, I think I, I I kind of in my gut I knew that there, this was. I mean, we we, we happen to want to live here anyway, but. I knew that there was a lot, and who knew, who knew COVID was going to happen? So look, we, we got we got it got in at the right time, um, but at the same time, I, I was looking. The numbers were looking fantastic. I could see sales prices, and that's that's why I like to track because I like to see the trend. Yes, the data is great, um, but but the but the data is often lagging. So if if you're not that's that's the reason why three six months is uh, seeing the data, but you're not going to pick that up until. Um, maybe it's too late because markets can actually move quite quickly. Property markets can, so um, that's that's another reason why I like to use my kind of three to six months getting a spreadsheet done. So, but this place, it's three beds, uh, one bath, um, and it's on. It, the, another thing I really loved about this place was it's on seven hundred square meters. So, um, oh, wow. develop, I'm, I'm thinking straight away development potential, development potential, and and it's already it's it's proven on the same street. There's probably four or five or six or seven of the same type of dwelling. So it's not filled with townhouses, but it's got enough of an evidence to say that you're not going to be a pioneer building a town building like a duplex on this on this kind of property. You might have some issues. There's a bit of slope slope issues. So. Um, but there's, I reckon you could easily do a, um, do a, do a, do a, not a duplex. You could probably do one out the front and one, build one out the back. Um, so mm. uh, if, if you, so did, yeah, you so did you look into any of that when you were doing it? Like, did you, did you get a town planner to look over it? Did you think no, about that? In, 
I would I would highly recommend if if somebody's doing it for for that sole purpose, I would definitely do that. Guys like Adam Maney, uh, I know a few other sort of town planners as well. So um, if if that's what if that's something that's vital to, you, and I would say that you should have a have a value add or a twist to your to any investment that you buy. Um, and then that way it gives you the option, it gives you the flexibility because then that way if, if we don't see – so I've teased the audience enough. Let, let's, let's go to the next slide, Joe. Let's, let's do it. Let's kind of – so I bought this for 570 back in the purchase end of 2019, so start of COVID. Um, so this property I would say is now – so you might need to zoom in a little bit there so people can see that. I can't. Can't. You can't? Can't zoom there's in? No zoom, there's no zoom in. So let's just say there's a property that's sold across the road, uh, across the road from this one. Uh, in November 2020, so this was less than 12 months after. Uh, you're trying to zoom in, eh? Yeah. Yeah. You probably could zoom in now. Mate, zoom in. Zoom. Oh, you're zooming out. <laughs> no, I'm zooming in. It's zooming out. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, look, it's going 100%. <laughs> well, maybe if oh, I okay. zoom out, it'll zoom in. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. there you go. That's, ah. that's weird, isn't it? But anyway, so the, the one on the right, the one on the right is, is the one literally right across the road from this one, sold for a hundred thousand more, um, 12, less than twelve months later. Okay. So, so what are we looking at? This one here was seven hundred and twenty-five, sold in February twenty-one. We're now in yep. August twenty-one. Yep. Is this the most recent so, sale? So that's no, that's, no, no. So that's 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 on. I've, I've purely chosen properties from this street. So there was one in 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 a, in a better location in the suburb that sold for eight hundred thousand on the weekend. There was one just up the road from us, which is brick. So it's not comparable. You can't compare brick to a to a um, to a weatherboard house. You can't compare. It's apples and oranges. But if you want to kind of dream a little bit, that one sold for eight uh, eight ten. And there's one that was somewhat similar to ours. The only it was very it was actually small land five fifty six sold for eight hundred thousand, but in a better part of the suburb. So that's I would say conservatively mm -hmm. now it's probably I mean our the, the property that sold there in February twenty twenty one there was I, I went to the open home, open home it sold first open home there was about 15, 20, 30 groups through it and it, and that was kind of FOMO every, it's not as it's not as hot as that now so seven twenty five somebody paid too much for that property um, so I wouldn't say that that is a that that's kind of a crazy not crazy but it's a it's an inflated price. I would say conservatively seven hundred is, is what it, what it would be worth. Um, okay, then, and how much did you buy it for? Uh, Five seventy. Five seventy. So how much? Yep. I mean, I don't do math in public. Um, so how much? <laughs> more than more, 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 more than twenty percent, Joe. Uh, let's the twenty. Mm. Let's say twenty twenty two and a half or twenty. Let's say twenty three percent approximately. If we. Um, and, and, and that's, look, if, if you wanted to be really greedy, you could list it if you wanted to sort of, depending on how quickly you wanted to sell it for. Um, because I, I have noticed that properties aren't selling as quickly in the area. They were literally most, up until about a month or two ago, COVID lockdowns, um, they were selling literally pretty much most open homes. Unless you had like a, a crappy kind of a really dodgy house, um, then it would take a little longer. But most properties are selling. Yeah, go. Um, one thing I just want to point out, and I don't want to, I guess it's not really going to prove my point too much, but if we look back at this area in 2016, um, when when you bought your other one, when was that one? 2015? Uh, yeah, yeah 20, 2015, mate. Yeah. Okay. I thought, so you I bought, thought about this well. <laughs> but did you? Yeah, you bought it in 2015 for 335. 34. Yeah. 334 and this yeah. one went for 386 and it's now worth 750,000. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that hurts. I know it does. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't hurt now. You've got you've had the lessons learned, but this is the reason why we keep talking about this stuff, right? Is because yeah. that is 300 and like if you had it, you know, wait for a little bit while, save save up a little bit more to get your deposit, blah blah blah. You would have an extra hundred and fifty, three hundred, three hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. I could have, I could have done that with a guarantor. Um, I did, I've done borrowing, it with a guarantor. Borrowing, and and the guarantor would have been released a long time ago. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's it's. I, I, I of course I've thought about that joke. <laughs> yeah, I bet you have. Um, okay, so what were the metrics that were leading you to this area? Should we jump into suburb trends? Yeah, go, go to suburb trends because, um, I mean, I, I didn't uh, – oh, you got already got it up. Look at – oh, he's got Zilmi. 
No, no, I've got it here, mate. I'm it, 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 me, mate. it gives me not no, no. In, in all fairness, it's um it's it's one of those things that if if you I'm the kind of guy if, if I went and bought this kind of property that I did first up, I would be like, I'm a legend, shit, I'm shit hot, I'm 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 the goat. I'm the goat of property investing. First property yeah. I'm making that amount of thing. Um, and a bit, yeah. So if we look at that, look at look at those numbers. Look at the inventory. So where did you buy it? So you back started in, uh, probably no, no wait, November, 2019. So yeah, it doesn't go far enough back. <laughs> yeah, oh, it does. I mean, it, so they've got it. They've got a July 2019 there. I don't know why it starts at July 2019. So it goes July 2019 to May 2020. But even if you look in between those, so if you look at that time period, it dropped from what was that about four. Four was it the house inventory? Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, three, yeah, and then it dropped to what three point three point two was it? Well, then it's dropped down here. Look, it's 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 starting oh, to level out. So that stuff that you're talking about there, some of the um, listings, the listings have still dropped. I mean, look, it was at yeah. three hundred. There was three hundred listings, and now yeah. start to see the, the the pressure being put on the market at that time. Oh, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, man. Like it's it's really like I'm I'm sort of and look at and. Cor and, and correlation doesn't equal causation, but no, lo and behold, the price has uh, gone from what is it, five something to five eighty to six eighty, yeah, hundred grand. Yeah, that, and that, that, that that's the meeting, of course. So, and I think that's a that's at the SA three level as well, Joe. So, if you if you go purely go, go to um go to real, I, I know we don't really like realestate.com. Do but we? Let's, Do we not? <laughs> I've I mean, I we, we love some. I mean, because I don't know. Really, median house price. But go, go to um, Unandera median house price. Just go, Google <laughs> that, and and that'll show. That'll show. Uh, yeah, oh, you've got to. Oh, mate, you should have just googled it. You, literally, Unandera median house price. But there you go, and then median house price, and that'll pop up. This, this is. I, I, I love. I mean, this is meaning house price is very imperfect. Don't, don't I mean, you got to you got to dig well, into the while that while that loads. We can look at the market segmentation in this area and get a bit of yeah. an understanding of where that's sat. So perfect, the majority, yeah. So, so what? Well, if you so look, the, I mean, that's the units. you're looking at units. So you get the houses are the green ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> I looked at this last night, so I, I didn't. Uh, I, I I did prepare in advance. So if you look at that, the the, the what is it? Eighty percent of the seventy eight percent of the properties were between, I think, what is it? Six and eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Like, so, so the majority so, is here. What are these type of properties down here? The the four hundred to six hundred. What are those? They they would be. They would probably be. Uh, the, the, those type of ones would be. There's ones that are literally knockdown rebuilds. I saw one go for four, probably four eighty, and it, and it was. I oh, mean, I looked at it. You you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't put your worst enemy in the property. You but but you buy it and then you, you do it. You, you do a reno. Like I almost thought I want to go and buy this property. This is this is. Uh, I can. I mean, yeah, I, don't I think know I remember you telling me. Yeah. Yeah, and and I was like, let's let's buy this. Let's. Put a put a 50 k reno in it, and and now it's worth six fifty six. Yeah, there's an opportunity there to be had. But um, if you look there, yeah, that's that's the median house price now. So it's actually quite similar to. If you look at the trend, look at look at look at that. This is monthly trend, mind you. This is crazy. Like, if you look at the annual, it's it's just. I mean, it's it it it, it, it peaked in twenty seventeen. So the reason, so we had that massive bull run in, or well, call it a bull run, but massive run up in Sydney. Um, between 2012 and and then it sort of then it flatlined and and went back, and now it's so now you it's just climbed it very very well. So it was at 580 when you could have bought, and then you bought at this 532 uh, section. Obviously, you didn't yeah. pay that, but yeah. Um, so we we paid 570. So that that was one of the lessons that I learned um, probably. So 20 even in 2020. So this is kind of the annual. If you go to the back as the back to the monthly, you kind of you, you didn't see it started to it take off even more this year. Like it's, oh, this yeah. So now, now if you look, yeah, six, mate. It's, I mean, apparently it's gone up. I mean, medians are imperfect signs anyway. It's gone up thirty thousand in a month, apparently. I mean, I, I don't know, but the the sales numbers numbers are quite high though. It's not it's not just ten sales. It's actually, that's seventy. So it's seventy properties transacted. So yeah. So how did what are the lessons I learned from that? Let's let's go to that. Um, and we've looked at the numbers, done that. 
Now, um, negotiating. So this is one of the things that I didn't quite nail on this one, and, and this is probably where when we're talking to Scotty, um, negotiating is one of the bigger uh, de detriments uh, I, that I underestimated, uh, determinants. That's a funny word, isn't it? I, use, I was using big words at midnight last night. So when I was negotiating, I literally thought, you know, I'll go in and I'll sort of, it was listed at 570. Actually, I think it said 570, 590. And I said, oh, you know, I'll be a bit cheeky. I'll go in with a, with a low ball, low ball at five, 545. And, and then the agent, agents already, before I even sort of, agents called me and said, left the voice and I said, hey, Jeff, there's a, there's, a, there's another offer on the table. Um, you want to, you want to, got to put your best foot forward. Um, and 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 there is a bit of emotion. This this is not just an investment property. This is one that we are are, li are going to live in, or have are living in. So I sort of said, well, hey, okay, if if it was if it was investment, I might have not paid five seventy. But I just said I had a conversation and we said, okay, what's the maximum we'd offer five seventy and put it in and offer accepted. Right. So, okay. So do you feel yeah. like you left some money on the table there? Oh look, maybe maybe, maybe ten thousand. But in the scheme of things, though, maybe that's not a lesson. But if I reckon the market wasn't as hot as what it was, so I think we might have been able to to um, snag it for five sixty. But um, in the scheme of things, do you say, oh look, hey, for ten thousand dollars, to what 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 the property is now valued or will be valued at, um, is it worth that extra ten k? Probably yes. I don't know. Is it, Joe? You're, what do you reckon? Well, not for the person that just spent seven thirty-five um, with that extra ten k. <laughs> but probably not. Uh, but yeah. for you, yeah, absolutely. In hindsight, yeah. I reckon you did a yeah. pretty good job there. Um, but yeah. like, like, um, so what is the lesson learned that we can really take from it? Um, think, like, don't, don't. When they say give your final offer, because my lesson actually, I, I, when I was buying my PPOR, they said give us your final offer, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll give you my final offer. And because yeah, we've got someone else competing against. I'm like, sure you do. And they're like, okay, we need a final best offer in writing. And I was like, okay, great. Here's my best offer. And they're like, no, seriously, give us your best offer. And I'm like, look, guys, you know, I'm willing to negotiate, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, they gave me a call and they're like, okay, cool, property sold. I'm like, awesome, thank you. And like, oh no, not to you. I'm like, uh, what do you mean? They're like, oh, it's gone for seven, seven twenty. It was 7.25. And I'm like, cool, 7.30. They're like, oh, no, you don't understand. It's already gone. I'm like, 7.30, 7.35. Like, what do you want? Like, I want to get the property. They're like, no, you, it's gone. We've already signed the contract. I'm like, oh, shit. So how do you – there's a bit of a balance there of I think maybe you you probably did the right thing, right? You didn't go backwards yeah. and forwards and backwards and forwards and not listen to the agent. Sure, you might have been able to get it more, but that's why you hire an expert like Scott to do all these agent games for you. Um, but yeah, like there's a comment here that someone says, first time negotiating is really scary. FOMO kicks in 100%, especially when it's a PPOR. When it's an, when it's an investment, it's so easy to walk away. Oh, great. The numbers stack up. This is a really good deal. I don't want it. I want it. Okay, great. It's going to be this the, 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 the rubber. The, rub, the rubber would have really met the road, and 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 I suspect that there might not have been. I mean, maybe there was another offer on the table, and they just weren't willing to come up higher than what we offered. But the interesting thing would have been this: is, is if the agent said, "Actually, there's now five eighty. Yeah, because we we said, "Well, no, five seventy is what we're going to." But but you throw that other thing into the equation, and you say, "Well, maybe maybe we say, okay, our budget was up to seven hundred, so." But but I, I sort of knew that this prop. I was like, this, I don't want to pay anything more than five cents for this property because I that's that's where my market knowledge really came in. That's that's what I that was my that was my maximum offer. I mean, would we have, would we have paid more potentially? Um, but I mean, I, I probably wouldn't. Have, but um, yeah, we, we we might have I might have arm might have been twisted to pay a little bit more. But um, because we were looking for a couple of months, it was it was not not a lot. And um, yeah, so that's right. Okay, cool. So what what is um while you're doing that, Joel's put a good little question here that um we won't answer just yet, but um do you want to rephrase that Joel as a question because I think there's some um, some good points that we might be able to kind of get get to you there. Um because uh, he said I'm looking to use a buyer's agent for my third investment property, but all they yep. preach is house and land and the figures just don't stack up. So it sounds like he's a bit of a sophisticated investor. Um, like in like more so than than everybody, every the normal people that just don't actually do step one of checking out what they're actually looking at. Um, 
Anyway, yeah, Reef, if you've got any questions that we can answer, let us know. Um, now, you've got here, Jeff, tracking actual sales prices of neighboring suburbs will help you understand trends even down to the street level. That is... I'm a bit of a mouthful, is it, you reckon? Go on, tell me about it. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to share my screen here, um, and mm. I haven't actually got it sorted, so I'm going to have to awkwardly shuffle to... Hey, geez, why, why did I not prepare this earlier? <laughs> That's all right. Well, um, let me share this. I'll share this bad boy, and then we will. Let's have a look. So you're gonna you're gonna see. Actually, wow. So there you go. That's actually what happens. It just takes over the screen. There you go. Mm -hmm. we, we know we know we know what happens now. Um, so let's have a look. I'm gonna. I should really just have this up. Mate, let's just go into the matrix. Why don't we go four levels deep? <laughs> oh, audio feedback as well. Great. Yeah. Is it is there feedback in there? Uh, should be fine. I, I can't hear any. Um, so let's have a look recent G. We're really looking at my bloody digging into my bloody here we go. So this is this is what I did. You just saw about 15 passwords there, so just ignore you saw that. So this is um this is what I you can see. Oh, let me just see, make sure that oh geez, oh, this is not really working out, is it? Bloody hell. This is me. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, mate. What are uh, you doing? Okay, let me let me let me remove that. I will <laughs> Uh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it sorted now. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on a different different screen. Okay, let's let's go back. I'll stop sharing. Get rid of that one. Stop screen. Hey, jeez. <laughs> the waves oh, are great. Oh. You missed that, I think, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I saw the waves. I did, I did see them. Uh, here we go. Okay, this this should be better. Here we go. Right. Well, you finally sorted it out. Oh wow! So, this is a real spreadsheet. Like? I know this is a this is a this is a hard this is what I did and this is what I mean when I say three six months looking at I looked at and, and these were in the areas we were looking at um, so what I did I literally looked at the, what suburb was the address and and yeah sure you could pay, you could probably get a VA to do this for you, you get a VA you could get somebody to yeah but it. it's not but you're not going to learn anything getting a VA right exactly like you can, get, exactly like, me, right? You can yeah. export it to CSV from RP Data done. But you know, what, what, what have you learned though, right? And what and you've no. looked at, yeah. So, what I learned from this was I tracked all, all these kind of these, these are things that I track. I even put the age in there because I thought, hey, if this property was listed for, I don't know, 800,000, but it sold for, I don't know, if it sold for, I don't know, 600 and it listed for 800, that agent's the agent that I want to buy. If I want to negotiate with that agent, um, <laughs> and I want, I want, I don't want to not sell off that agent. So, the other thing I just did, I said inspection comments as well. So, I, I literally did this for, and, and what I what I was able to do is I, would, I was able to then say, okay, well, which which areas, what, what is kind of a, if it's listing for X amount, so one of the more expensive suburbs in the area was Fig Tree. So Fig Tree, we sort of said, but whereas Unidera we bought was a cheaper, the reason it was cheaper because of Housing Commission, right? Um, and, and even something like Albion Park went all the way down that way, um, all other properties. So I actually track all properties now in the area. I'm, I'm still tracking it because I just, I just love, I love keeping up to uh, with what's happening. You should have um, so a sell. You should um, you should have a, a sell there for E, where it's it's like the sale price over the the listed price, and then you'd get like a trend of um, how much like people are discounting. You get a vendor, you get a discount rate. Um, which would be I, interesting. I, I could. So yeah, that, that's 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 the spreadsheet that I have. Um, You're still doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I, 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 look, it's, it's not that many. I, it takes me about 10, 10 to fifteen minutes a week. I, and, and that's that's why I know that the, our, our property right now is probably worth seven to seven to seven fifty. Seven fifty on. If somebody gets really emotionally attached, then we kind of we, we we make it look really sexy. It'll sell for seven fifty. But if we kind of if I want to be conservative, it's worth about seven hundred. <clears throat> Um, and that's that's how I know because I know what I know what comparable properties are selling for and have sold for. So I don't I don't need to guess. I don't need ComBank or I don't need realestate.com to tell me what properties are selling for. Because I actually know what a comparable property has sold for. So enough enough of that though, enough of me. Um, well, what are people's thoughts on doing that? Is it, is it kind of is it too much? Like is it overkill? Like for me, if you want to do it yourself, you have to get really good at doing this. What are your thoughts, Joe? Um, yeah, absolutely. Like this is why people pay a buyer's agent because that's what their job is. You say do it for three to six months. That's what they've been doing for three, six, 12 months, yes. searching for areas to be able to do that stuff. So that's why you pay them a lot of money because 
there are professionals doing a professional job that that needs a whole lot of research but you need to make sure that they're just my and I was, I was going to say, you, you, you could always put put a bit more kind of tech behind it. Um, you don't have to necessarily do it the way I've done it because you could easily just say, I'm sure there's kind of some macros you could throw in there and, and still look at it in the research and say, actually, you still get the same value without actually, but it doesn't take that long. And I, I, I mean, if you love if you love property investing, I don't know, I, I kind of it was a bit of my guilty pleasure at the end of the week. Yeah, I think it is because you've already bought there and you're not buying there again. So there's, there's, there's no, this is not property investing anymore. This is Jeff's, you know, fix. So, <laughs> but it does get you better at the market, right? It does get you a lot more familiar. So definitely track what's going on, what's selling, what the agent's listing for. And I bet if you have some, like you really could dig into that data and see what agents, because that's like the, the PPOR that we bought. I know what agent I want to buy from and I know which agent I want to list from. Um, there are so many rubbish real estate agents. Um, but I'm, look, mate, we've been going for a long time now. So maybe let's just um, get to some, let's get to your high level overviews. Like what have we learned out of this whole, what have we learned today? So I, I, I would say if you go to the, I, know, I didn't do an over, overview, but um, what, what I would say is if I, if I, I mean, thinking back six years ago to, to when I bought, maybe seven years now, to when I bought Zilmi, uh, six or eight, whatever it was, that was, um, yeah, this this is a an education versus implementation. So uh, this is, a, I probably attended hundreds of these free seminars in between about probably 2011 and 2013. So that's when I sort of thought, hey, look, I probably should do something about going to all these seminars rather than just going and, and using my time on weekends and weeknights when we could still do that at the time, going to meetups as well and talking to people and sort of hearing all these other people buying properties. I'm like, oh, I should probably do that. So I tried, I looked at that in Western Sydney, Mount through it, told to save money, told that story. I finally purchased using a buyer's agent in Zilmi. So I've kind of gone through that. Some, and the key lesson I learned from that is giving away the keys to your financial future you have to, you still have to do those, put those checks and balances in place. Ask those questions, ask those tough questions. And if they can't come back with answers, I don't, it doesn't matter if you pay to retain it to this person. Just, just, just say, hey, look, I don't think this is working out for me. Uh, and, and you might lose a thousand dollars, you might lose two thousand dollars. And, and most of them will just give back to you. They, they will. If they, if they kind of, if they don't feel they're delivering the service, they will. But if they, if they can't tick your boxes, that if they, if you don't feel that they can achieve what you want, um, just, just kind of, yeah. You don't need to go through that process. Know that, um, because otherwise, you you're going to potentially fall into statistics of one or get stuck at two. Mm. Um, and, mm -hmm. and 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 then and then I sort of 2016 to 2020 in between. I, I, I've done a couple of non buy and hold deals as well. Um, I didn't. I, I purposely didn't talk about those on this deal, on this um, live because otherwise we could go for. I mean, there's just so much we could go into. Um, and, and then we sort of, 2018, the, the stars aligned, the, the, the clouds parted and, and Joe rocked up with his moustache. And I don't even remember talking to you at, at Millionaire Mega Conference down in, down in Melbourne in, in June 2020, uh, 2018, sorry. Um, oh, I do, mate. Um, I remember you quite uh, quite vividly, so that's upsetting, but that's fine. Oh, I mean, I mean, geez, yeah. I mean, this is back in my days when I was, yeah, when I was, I was a seminar king. I was, I was going to. Yeah, we just, you just, <laughs> you just a, a regular. Yeah, but um, like we didn't go out to Crown and, and go and yeah, getting off tangent. But yeah, so then we created Oz Property Investors. But I also bought that property in Unidera. So look, I'm not going to say it's all kind of good planning, um, but I th I think um, knowing what I know now, I would not have. This is a question I think you should always ask yourself about your property investments. Uh, knowing what you know, know now, would you buy the same property you bought today? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy. Uh, I probably wouldn't buy Zilmir again. And the reason I wouldn't is because I understand that market is not a unit townhouse market. It's a, it's a house market because people are buying the houses, knocking them down, turning them into townhouses, making money, or hopefully making money on developments. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm I'm with you, mate. I, it's like um, it you build your foundation, right? Like uh, people want to jump straight into developments first. I don't know if that's the best. I mean, I can't give you any advice around what you do. Um, but I don't think that that's the best way to get started. You need that. You need to have a couple of. You need to build a solid foundation first, and then when you've got that, you've got tapped out of borrowing capacity. Then maybe you start to look at developments to pay down that debt, and then you've got lo and behold, you're going to have lower debt, which gives you more serviceability to be able to buy more and get into joint ventures and do all that fun stuff. Um, okay, so we have a lot of. Um, um, 
things. Questions, that's what they are. So stop sharing, Joe, my little yeah. face. Can you look at them? Because you're a much better question question going through her. Um, so I'm going to start with one. Um, I'm going to go with Joel because he rephrased his question and I asked him to, what a bloody legend. Um, okay, he says, I'm very sophisticated. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He said, I watched all your content, really great insights. I'm about to sign paperwork to get the ball rolling, but I'm holding off as the numbers just don't make sense. Oh, shit, this is real. This is real life. What do you mean? 475000 buy and 400 per week. I see much more value for money in other places I can find. Okay, well, what's the area? God, there it is. Yeah. What kind of, yeah. What yeah, kind of tell, us, tell, us, tell us the area, Joel. I mean, uh, we, we can't – look, I, I, I don't I'm, – I'm not comfortable with everything. And that, this is why when anybody says – Oh, look, what suburb? That's why I don't feel comfortable saying anything. So I don't, I don't know the suburb. I'm, I'm not comfortable just looking at data and saying, oh, data looks good, go and buy that. Because until I know... Uh, that's, that's, that's your yield. Like, that's not a bad yield at all. Okay, yeah. cool. Walloon. Oh, is that how you start? I don't even know what it is. I've never <laughs> yeah, heard of it. it. I've, never, I've never heard of Walloon. Okay, well, do you want to... I'll do a screen share again. Let's look at the data live um, and see what Suburb Trends does. Um, for Walloon. Um, and, and, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say buy it or don't buy it based on the starter, by the way. Um, <laughs> no, def definitely not. It's in Queensland. Oh, well, you, you can. You can I can buy I, it. I don't know. I, I, I worry about those those kind of uh, those. It could be one of those satellite, you know, those like Springfield Lakes. And I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm. Those, those things worry me a, bit, a little bit because they're just like, I don't know. They're, they're 20, what, 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 What's that? What's the yeah? So towers. What is it? Twenty thirty k's. What's this? What's the uh, spring uh, Walloon, or do you want a Springfield Lakes? No, no. Yeah, exactly. What what is a, a what do you call it? Satellite suburb. Yeah. So it's it's not it's one of those. They just built it in the middle of kind of nowhere, right? Look look it up, and when I say nowhere, um, it's it's kind of it's not it's far enough away from Brisbane that you're sort of not considered Brisbane for mine. Um, but it's but it's close enough that it's kind of you could easily drive to, of course, like 25, 30 k's. So whereas in Sydney, 25, 30 k's in Sydney is is Parramatta, I suppose, probably Parramatta. Okay, cool. So median median asking price for the area. Um, and this, this is what is worries me. This is what worries me because I look at this and I, and I say, East which is the closest. Yeah, it's one of. The oh, mate! Look at all this supply. Look at all the supply that can come on in this area, just straight up. Let's let's let's, let's, let's stay let's stay partial, Joe. Let's stay partial. Let's uh, let's kind of. Well, how how do I stay partial? I'm just saying what. Well, I'm, oh God! Just, I, I, I don't. I, 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 Joel probably knows a lot more about this area than what we do. So I don't. I, What's yeah. going on here? Housing inventory is is dropping quite a lot. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, what? Why? Who are we to say? Very that, interesting. I, I, yeah. Okay. So, but that's so. Actually, I'll zoom into this. So, housing inventory. So that is the amount of supply and demand. What is the amount of supply and demand? Then we've got house listing. So people listing their property has gone from eight hundred to um. Still a lot of listings. Though. I think this this this, this is at the SA three though, Joe. That, that's why this is, I, this I is it. Yeah. This is at the SA3 level. But then yeah, we go down to the suburb level and look at what's happening in that suburb. So, yeah, yeah. House listing. Oh, okay. so. house, house inventory. So, oh, yeah. okay. This is a perfect example. Um, okay, cool. Okay. With yeah. that rent. That's just – I would and, not and, buy and it's, that. It's a, green, it's a greenfield site, basically. Okay. I, I, this, okay. This is the key thing here. Look at this. This is house, house supply. 10, 10, 10, and 10. Now, Jeff is 100% right. So statistical area three is um, what the government uses for geographical look, areas. Look at the map. It's yeah. all bloody, it looks, like, it looks like farmland. I mean, I don't know. Okay. It's, it's, it's near the it's, RAF site. It's near a RAF base, which is supposed to have a lot of future employment. No. no. Well, it, it could, but I, I suppose that employment is great, but are, are people... Are people going to live in the same area? That's 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 the question I would want to ask. Or, or are they are they going to live in Brisbane and commute to the RAF? I, I, I don't know. Like, um, is it brand new? Way. It sounds like it's brand new, isn't it? Oh, you mean the, the suburb? Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. just I, okay. So this is this agree. this is okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do. It. I'm gonna write a big post about a house and land and off the plan, um, a thriving community, Walloon. Do you know how much they would have spent on this website? Probably six to ten k, right? 
Um, they've got all this land here. So who's who's paying for this stuff? They've then got developers out there built, building these beautiful little architecture things. Who's paying for that? Okay, the marketeer that's called you and spoke to you and told you how great this is, do you know how much he's getting? $40,000 if he sells you this deal. So that means, great, okay, cool. So how how is he able to turn, you know, 40, where is all this money coming from? It's coming from an overinflated price. Um, yeah, so like it's a little late. So usually I'd be a little bit more delicate with this. Um, the cash flow, I'm not so concerned about the cash flow. Like um, you've got $400 a week rent um, for 470, like a 4.5% yield. That's not so bad. That's that's actually quite good. Um, it's, the, it's the supply issue. So yeah. when, so housing supply is, uh, where's my little, where's our little map, right? Um, like people can just build more houses. So the prices and the prices are never, ever going to go. Well, they're not they're never, no, ever. No, no. Let's, let, let's not say never uh, because no, I mean, it will eventually, but um, oh, I just wish I had thought this through a little bit more. I could really let's, do let, a good let, bit on this. Um, if, we, if, if we take, if we take it back to, take it back to my first property purchase, right. And, and, it, and it's, a, and it's a similar kind of, it's a similar story. It, it's, it's not. It's 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 a different type of property in, in 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 a different area. But if you if you if you go to the development approvals in Zilmi are not going down anytime soon. So look at look at the development. Can you look at yeah? Look at the development approvals for this area. How no, it's not. It's not about you anymore. It's I know about it's not. But what I'm saying, like I'm, I'm saying, like this is the kind of thing that I wish. So look at look at how many approvals are only going up. I mean, there's there's a trend there. So I mean, unit approvals are none because there's no unit. Nobody's doing units there. So I mean, it, I'm not saying you, you potentially could make money on this. I, I'm not saying you won't make money. I, I'm just saying, for me, there's there's not there's there's not there's too much um, there's not enough upside potential in this kind of project. Um, but um, there's not enough upside in this project, and I, I, it's not. It, oh, I want to de-risk my investments, right? Um, you could, yeah. I don't know. It's it's probably not probably no for me as well. It's hundred percent. The current yeah, market would be considered a strong buyer's market. So what that means is anyone that can come here and buy it. Um, relatively stable compared to three months ago. The modest average monthly sale with a three-month average, blah, blah, blah. The time taken to sell a house is 53 days. This crease, yeah. Okay, it's, 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 a, it's a little bit, this is going to be skewed though. And, and Kent would through that, yeah, yeah, it's the SA3 level, um, I, I, I believe. But, well, no, um, no, no. So the reason it's skewed is because um, there's there's a whole bunch of stock that's come on the market. So I, I'd be sure to look at this one in 12 months' time and sort of see if that inventory comes down. I, it will come down. Well, no, this is what his forecast says here. It says well, it will be um, at 10. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean that's that's just technology. But it's machine um, learning, though, so I don't I don't know that. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's the same, right? It's looking at past data. But this is this is one of those areas exactly like what Jeff was just talking about, where he articulated it a little bit better than me. It's one of those satellite suburbs. The closest suburb is already a highly developed area, which is called Ipswich. Um, not an area that I would be putting um, too much. I could share all the statistics they put together for me. I bet it looks beautiful. I bet they've got sensational reports that look absolutely schmick. Um, I don't really care about it if it's not cash flow positive. Well. Um, you can get cash flow positive deals. You can get you can get fantastic cash flow positive deals. Um, what the problem is is all the built in um, expenses. So if there is forty thousand dollars floating around, um, actually let's just look at Walloon as a as a place. I guarantee if it's not like it's, ugh, I need to sleep. But let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I, well, whilst whilst Joe gets this up, I, I, I want to I want to see some other questions because what were were there other questions in the yeah, mate. Pop, you read the questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you fire me up. Fire me up, Joel. We got to save another one. This is what we do. We just save people from these terrible investments. Yeah. So, okay. Actually, a good example based on this is that um, this is what Jeff. This is what the person before Jeff was buying. So you know that thirty thousand dollars that Jeff lost, uh, that thirty thousand dollar gain that Jeff had from the other previous person. That's exactly what this is. Um, so I, I like this person. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Joe. Look, there we go. Look, two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a, a normal, a normal house. Um, then we've got the developments. They've got all this land, nothing but land. There's no tight supply. Um, 
This is another development. It's all just developments. I can't see what that no, is. That one's developments. developments, developments, developments. Yeah. Why would anyone want to? Why would anyone? I mean, I'd want to live there because it's got a beautiful little house. But for an investment, there's no pre look. It's all just new. It's just it's just a new build. They're yeah. just trying to make a new suburb. Yeah, the, 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 the challenge that all and and it's not to say that all house and land packages are bad. If if the, if there's like a, a highly sought after kind of infill kind of suburb or even. There's one that Schenker did quite well, and I, I wasn't convinced on I wasn't convinced on Schenker's one a suburb, Wongawilly, um, but because there's a lot of land out there as well. But it's it's the suburb called Wongawilly. Um, but but the, the challenge that what will happen here, Joe, is if they don't if they if they start to if the sales start to sell, they'll, they'll just drop the price a little bit, and so yeah. or they'll, they'll start they'll start incentivizing and saying, well, they'll give you rental guarantees for two years or three years or four years or whatever. And and then and then that that way they they make um they'll, they'll build that into the price of the property right they'll say oh yeah yeah you, you can pay this amount so they'll sell them but then the problem is the person who then come it's like a, I almost like in some of these brand new properties the brand new cars not all of them not all of them but some of them are because you you drive it off the lot and next minute the second person says well why would I there's there's now fifty of these on the on on sale and and the and and there's no everybody it's all the same product and 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 the rents drop fifty bucks a week because yeah after that there's rental guarantee there doesn't carry and on. Look, this this place here, this is a real this is a real place in Maloon, three hundred and thirty five. So yes, it's it's brand new. So it, it's selling for what was the price again? It's an existing property. Yeah, existing property. So yeah, four seventy five, and an actual property is selling for three hundred and thirty five. So there's well, built in well, margin. And, and the thing, the thing I'd like to point out, Joe, go back to that. That's that's on a thousand. That's on a thousand square meters. So go back up to that. Oh, wow. Room. So so what they're doing is you, you could chop that up and build probably at least two, maybe three, but depending on the size of the lots. And so, yeah, and so then you, you can make, sell them for five hundred thousand to people in Sydney. And <laughs> so the people making money on this are mostly the developers, right? I mean, that's okay. That's, cool. Here are three people that you should reach out to. Ripe House Advisory, jump on the phone to them. Um, what's the other one? Investor Kit, jump on the phone we're, to them. We're, we're not getting paid for this, by the way. We should be, damn it. Yeah, we should be, but <laughs> well, two no, conversations. Sure. We should be, now, especially when it's getting this deep into, say, key, go with these guys. So if I was buying an investment property for myself, the two guys that I would call up straight away would be Jacob Field at Ripe House, um, we need to get him on again. He's a, he's all right. His marketing is is going to get uh, get better with the help of uh, an, another one of our fr friends uh, in the property space. So we're exciting to see that get better. Um, and then Investor Kit, um, Arjun, very data driven, smart boy. Um, these guys buy investment grade properties in investment grade locations that aren't developer margins. There's no bullshit with these guys. So. Um, have a conversation. Book it. Claim your free consultation. Claim your free consultation. Jeez, of, man, this sounds yeah. like an ad. Bloody hell, Joe. It, well, it is an ad. It's a, he's, and now you get a sixty minute. He's very. He's very. Um. He's. He's. He's very. Uh, well, I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying your your thing sounds like an ad. I. I, I just say that uh, we have. Oh mine. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, book book a call with these. Just it's going to take you twenty minutes. Um. I you will, probably. I will say you're probably, before yeah, doing it, actually, actually. Figure out what you. I mean, you said positive cash flow, but what what does what 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 does positive cash flow do though? That's if it's your first property, then I, I don't know. Like, I when my one when I first bought, first bought my first one, I was probably making twenty to thirty bucks a week, and now I'm probably making fifty or sixty bucks a week. But it didn't help me buy the second and third property. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it's kind of exactly. So, yeah, it doesn't. That that was the big mistake that I made. I mean, you know, I bought a property for yeah thanks thanks denise um uh, for putting that in there um yeah i bought a property three two hundred and eighty thousand. spent thirty thousand dollars on a reno and i grew it to 310 which is the price of what i put into the reno um the terrible investment but i bought an area in an area where it was the most expensive like thing um but anyway this yeah cool okay i feel like we've saved we've saved another one i'm gonna I'm going to count that as a safe for us. Okay, cool. So I've, I feel like everyone's left except for Denise and Joel. Um, but no, if they're, they're, any... still, they're still well into the 20s watching, Joe. So Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. 
God, okay. I, I, I kind of wanted for the people that are, if you, it, well, we'll give you give you two minutes to throw one question. I'm going to answer it in. Um, I'm going to answer it very quickly. But um, any question, um, as long as it's not too 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 personal. Um, I mean, as long here's, as not the, here's the tools that they use. Can you pop the Joel's comment? The cash flow is only twenty five dollars positive per week, but still the rough five k tax return for depreciation. So they use the, all these complex sales tactics like tax depreciation. Positive net flow, uh, net cash. And I bet they were even talking about like you can cut your taxes, you can cut the tax up into quarters so you, you can get more cash flow and optimize it that way. Yeah. These are just these are just things of spruikers. The next thing coming is a rental guarantee. Um, okay. Do you, have, so, do, you have, do you have a question, Kylie? Because she, she always says an awesome question, very informative. But ask, ask me anything, Kylie. I'm not, um, I'm not afraid. I mean... I want to say anything because I, I want to support the supporters. I want, I want to kind of throw value out to the people. I don't want to go. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of other great buyers agents out there as well. This one, but um, yeah, any anybody, uh, well, I'll give it to one one uh, one hour thirty one, and then I'm going to say that there's not going to be yes, twelve month guarantee. That's not a question. <laughs> uh, Twenty five bucks. It's just comments saying that people that are happy. So. Um, what for, while we've got still well in the twenties of people, what content do you want to see, people? Do you want to see kind of us talk? Of, what what did you say? You, you were yeah. We should do Joe's story. I want to see Joe's story. I want to grill him. I'll, I'll make it much harder for him. But um, I think I, I think, think I made it. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's why that's why you, that's why you go last, right? Because oh, that's why you go first, and you kind of know what. Know how hard right. what, okay, what right. to expect. So we do have Megan Turner. Um, I'm on a different scale. I nailed my I nailed our PPOR by having no emotion. You go, girl. They tried to negotiate and I told them I was not negotiating the price and I wished them good luck. I secured the property. What a joke. What a joke bomb mistakes. mistakes. <laughs> I love that. Um, what, what, secured the property got... fifty thousand dollars below the initial advertised price, doubled its value within Within four years, Megan, you're, you've crushed it. Well done. <laughs> uh, I like. Four years examples will be great. Okay, let's. Um, I, I haven't bought hundreds of properties, so there's only so many I could. Um, there's only so many shows I could run with these kind of examples where I've actually properties I've actually bought. Um, but we can get we can grill grill Joe a little bit if he's comfortable. Um, but yeah, let's not right now. Let's finish not right now. <laughs> okay. Right, let's finish uh, up. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. That was a fun one. I enjoyed. Thank you very much, guys. Um, yeah, thanks, Jeff, for putting the effort in. You put a lot of effort into the the research and putting together your your big mistakes and your lessons learned. And um, I think we got a we had a little bit of fun at the end. So um, if you guys, if anyone's out there that has an investor story, we like getting investors on. I like hearing your story and hearing what your lessons learned are. Um, but also people that are in the trenches right now. Like I've just bought my first property. Well, we've just got people that haven't bought their first property yet and wondering what it's all like. So if you're brave and like, I mean, we try and make as comfortable as possible, but be, you know, step up and we're happy to, um, happy to, you know, chat, chat away chat. about your deal and how it all, how it all works. Joel, keep us in the loop with how all this goes. It would be really interesting to see. Um, yeah. Just keep us in the loop. It would be cool to hear. You, all right. I'll give you permission to send us a DM, Joel. Um, send it, send it to Joel and myself. Okay. Yeah, so. DM awesome. us. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll sign off. Let's go buy a property, guys. We will see you later. Have a great day. Have a great night. Yeah. You got to hit end. Three years. <laughs>